Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Eddie Jennings from EJSLLC.com. This video is going to be another in my RHCE practice session series where I'm preparing for the Red Hat Certified Engineer exam. Before I dive in, I want to thank returning subscribers for watching another video as well as invite everyone if you haven't subscribed yet to click that subscribe button and ring the bell when you do so you can be aware of when new content comes available. Also, if you enjoy the content of the video or find it useful, make sure you do click the like button and feel free to share it with others. In this video, I'm going to continue with the objective group use Ansible modules for system administration tasks that work with and then whatever the topic is. And for this, we're going to be looking at security. I do want to remind you that this is not intended to be authoritative information, nor is this intended to be a tutorial, but rather it's an opportunity for me to talk about whatever objective is at hand and try some examples and such of it to assess my readiness for the exam for this objective. Ideally, at the end of the video, I'll feel pretty confident about whatever it is that I was discussing and I'm ready to go for um, any tasks that might come related to that objective on the exam. Or at the end of the video, I realize that you know, I still have some knowledge gap to fill and between now and just under two weeks from now when I have my exam, that'll be enough time to, to do some review to make sure that I've shored up that information. That being said, I do try to have the information as accurate as possible for you. So for security, um, probably the first thing that comes to mind is working with SC Linux, which that's uh, something I'm going to do with this particular practice session. But also um, you can work with file permissions and such, which we've done, I believe, with uh, the file command. And I'm pretty sure there's a module for access control list as well. I'm, I'm not going to touch that in this particular practice session, but I am going to take a look at that between now and, and the exam just to get some basic familiarity with the module. But what I'm going to focus on is SC Linux. And there are a couple of things to keep in mind with working with SC Linux and Ansible, or at least what I've learned during my um, preparations for RHCE is you can use modules to configure SC Linux and configure um, you know both file context and booleans and um, some port context and such. But what you cannot do via just module with SC Linux is do a restoration of context. So you know usually when you have made a change for SC Linux, you would usually do restore con to where, wherever it is that you have made the change. Uh, typically I'm talking about doing this against files and directories that you would have to use the command module within Ansible to do restore con. So let's do an example here. We're going to do kind of a classic one with HTTPD where you have um, a different, different area that's being used for your index page rather than the original uh, var www HTML for your document root. So I'm already in my control node here. So let's do a little playbook. So vi security test dot yml name. We're going to be working or we're going to put working with security. And let's see, host. We'll do this against everything. Become yes. And do I want to do some variables? Nah, I won't worry with, with any variables. All right. So tasks install packages. And there are a couple of things to, to keep in mind with this, um, depending on the environment that you're in, such as the environments that I'm always working with for my Red Hat exam preparations are the minimal install to where, you know, if I need to install a package, I have to do that rather than just doing, you know, a full desktop install that, that has a bunch of stuff. Now do that because you don't know what environment you're going to have on your exam. You know, you could have a bare bones environment like I'm working with, or you can have, you know, the, as much of an, in, an install as you could possibly get just out of a, a, a basic installer. You just don't know. So I think it's good to practice with the minimal installs. So that way you get used to, to working with some packages and such. So there are going to be a few things that we are going to install with yum. Oops. Did the indentation wrong there. There we go. And we are going to install HTTPD. Firewall D I know is already installed, but just for good measure. And we're going to do policy core, policy core dash utils. No, it's policy core utils dash Python dash utils, I think. But when in doubt, we can do, we can check this out real quick. DNF what provides SC manage. I spell provides correctly. SE manage. Sounds right. Policy core utils dash python dash utils is what we need. 
and you're probably going to need to install this, I would imagine, to be able to do SE Linux stuff. All right, so we got that. We'll do state present. We'll go ahead and do some configuration here. Um, we'll configure the firewall. Oh, this is a little scratchier than I was expecting, probably because I did tons of these um, yesterday with my review and such. Here's the firewall D module. Port, we're going to allow port 80. State is going to be enabled. And permanent will be yes. And immediate will be yes. Configure services. So we use the service module and we'll make sure that all of these are started. And I'm going to use a loop for that. State started. Enabled yes, which is important. Then loop. HTTPD. Firewall D. All right, so let's go ahead and just run this playbook to have all that stuff installed and going. And I had a syntax error. So let's see where that syntax error is. Name, firewall D, all that looks good. Name, configure services, service, name. Oh, I have one too many quotation marks. All right, that should solve that problem. So the firewall is configured, but I still have a syntax error with my service. Ah, yep, there it is. All right, let's do it again. These little syntax errors have been killing me with my practice sessions. Definitely have to go a little bit slower on my exam to make sure I don't make all those errors because really what happens, I mean, you, you I guess you're trying to go fast, but you end up losing time because of having to go back and fix little syntax errors like that. Okay, so we have all the services and such set up. And let's do, let me cat this index HTML J2. Okay, we'll use that because we're going to create a different little index.html file. So we'll just use what's in this directory already that I made from a previous video. So let's go back into security and we're going to do a couple of things here. I'm going to add a create directory task. And this is where we're going to be putting our, um, our document root. So we'll do path. Just going to do web tests at the root directory. And also, I'm going to go ahead and create our index.html file. So, create index.html. Use the template command for that. Source is that index.html.j2. Destination is going to be web test.index.html. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and set the mode for this. So mode is going to be C6. What do I want to do for my mode? 755 maybe? So you have read execute, read execute for that. Yeah, I think that'll be good. Go ahead and set the owner and group to Apache. I probably don't have to do this. And then for this file, we'll set this to 644. I'm going to set the owner to Apache and the group to Apache as well. All right. So let's run this part. I'll probably use tags to make this go a little faster, but that's fine. I'm not under my time crunch for the test yet. I'm just in my practice session. All right, so we made our directory, we made our index.html. Now what we're going to need to do is alter the configuration of Apache to look to this web test directory for its document root. So let's see, how can I do this the Ansible way? I can either make me a template of the config file or I could use things like line and file to, um, to change stuff. So I think, I think probably doing the config file may be the best way to do that. So what I want to do is I want to copy the current config file from this server or from one of these servers to my, my current directory. So let's do this. I should be able to do that with an ad hoc command. So I'll just get it from one of them, rel an01. We're going to use the fetch module and we're going to do source. It's going to be, see if I can remember the exact path, etsy httpd conf httpd.conf. And I need to do equals instead of colon. You know, I need to try that sometime just to see if colon works. Every example I've always done has used equals for that. And destination is going to be home Ansible. Yeah, we'll just drop it into here. Become just to make sure and let's see how well this works. Hmm, did not like what I did there. 
Oh, I didn't do dash A. Yep, got to have that. Tell it this is what your arguments are. All right, so we should have, yep, folder for lab rail AN01. So let's CD into that and should give us like the whole folder structure. And let's VI into httpd.com. So what we're going to do is alter this and use a template to create a new configuration file. So server root's going to stay the same. We're going to change our document root, which of course I could just set this to a variable. I guess I can try that. We we'll use variables for this. So document root, this is going to become a variable called doc root. And what else do I want to do here? That's going to need to be doc root as well. Let's see what this is doing. So allow override none require access granted. That's going to further relax stuff. What I have found is I often need to change the this directory here or put these directives into um, into this next one here. Require all granted. In theory, we shouldn't have to do that because those directives are already there. All right, so we'll see what happens. If we need to make that change or not. And we're going to copy this to home and we're going to call it httpd.conf.j2. All right, so let's go back and edit our security file here. And what we're going to do, configure httpd.conf template. Source is going to be httpd.conf.j2. Destination is going to be web test. Nope, it's not. It's going to be etsy httpd conf http httpd.conf. And I'm not going to set mode or anything. I'm just going to keep defaults for that. Also not making a backup of the current one since I have, well, I did make, yeah, we'll do backup yes, just in case. We're also going to notify a handler. I haven't written the handler yet, but one thing that we're going to need to do is tell Apache, hey, you need to restart since we have changed the config file. Now, the other thing that we need to do is set um, SE Linux context, and we're going to need to do that for our directory and such. So let's take a look at the module for that. So ansible doc s, and what we're going to be doing is sef context. And a couple of things about this. Um, first of all, this target. This you're going to need to, is it target? Yeah. Oh, I'm thinking of the wrong thing here. Uh, where, let's see, what do we have here? You know, maybe drawing a blank on this. I don't think that was a thing. Let's take a look at the full documentation. There's something that's in the back of my head that I'm having to remember. Maybe it's for the um, for SE Bool. Oh no, it's for um, the SE Enforce. Okay, never mind. Yeah, I'm confusing this with with another module. So let's all oh, while we're in here, we can take a look at this. So what we're going to be setting the SE type is going to be F context. Our target is going to be the um, Actually, the SE type, I was wrong, is going to be the actual type that we're doing. So for us, I think it's going to be HTTPD RW sys, but we'll check that in just a minute. Then we have our actual target, which is what we're going to need. That's the, the good old regex-like deal, and then state present. So let's do this real quick. What I'm going to do is SE manage on this one. Yeah, I didn't think it was. So I'm actually going to do ad hoc command, ansible lab rel an01. We're going to do se manage. Actually, no, I'm going to do shell. We're doing se manage f context dash l, I believe is what I want. And we're going to grep for httpd. We're going to become for that. If I spell Ansible correctly, that will probably work a little bit better. Expand this out a bit. There we go. You know, probably what I should have done was, yeah, let me do this again. What I want is var www.html, which actually I think the answer was right in front of me there, but we'll run this again. There we go. So this is what I want, httpd, the sys rw content. So let's copy that. Go back into our security.yml. And we're going to call this set se Linux. So sef context. 
and then we want SC type. Paste that in there. The target is going to be web test. And then I always have to think about this one here. I think it's going to be star question mark. But what we can do is it has it here. Yeah. So parentheses. Oh, slash dot star. Slash dot star. And I think the question mark is outside of that. Yep, it is. So need to add state it's present then to make it effective we would have to do name or don't have to do name but we're going to do restore context we're going to do command and it's going to be se actually no it's going to be restore con dash r and i like doing v just because and we'll do that to web test and i think that is all that i need actually i want to make sure that se linux is enforcing so let's back to here set SC Linux to enforce and I believe the the module for that just SC Linux yeah and this is what I was thinking policy for that you're pretty much always going to be uh, saying targeted for that so let's go back that's what I was thinking of earlier so SC Linux policy targeted state enforced so we're setting our context there we're doing the restore con and I somehow, I don't know what I just did. Oh, I must have hit page down or end, maybe. That's strange. And lastly, we're going to make our handlers. So we need to make that one that was restart Apache. All right, so let's glance over this, see if I see any glaring syntax errors. Things look okay. All right, let's see what happens. It's a pretty long playbook here. I am going to run syntax check real quick. I liked it. All right, so we'll just run it here. Could probably do dash C as well. I'll probably be using that a little bit more on the exam just to be sure about things. All that's green. Expect that there. Oh, I forgot to define doc root. Yep, I was going to be all cool with my um my variables, and I totally forget to do it. Vars doc root. That's going to be web test. Okay. Let's do it again, this time with a variable. All right, got changed for that, and then I failed. Oh, I must have done state present. Okay, so let's do, got to do a couple of things, because I want to trigger our handler. So, oh, I did state enforced. It should be enforcing. That's what the error said, right? Yeah. And I'm going to add something to our configuration here, because I want the handler to be notified. Changed when I'm going to set that to true. Okay. Hopefully this will work this time. Or maybe I should say it should work because that's the famous last words in IT, right? All right. So we've made it past there. We're configuring the SC Linux context. All right. Running the handler. Okay. So time to put this to the test. Will it work the first time? My spider sense says no, but we'll see. All right. So HTTP lab rel an01 index.html. Hey, dare I say this works the first time? All right, there's number two. It renders a little differently. Not quite sure why that is, but all right, there's number four. And do number one again. So number one somehow is special with how it rendered. All right, so what I want to do is um, let's check a couple of things. And I want to, we're going to use some ad hoc commands, even though this stuff clearly has worked, but I just want to, to look at a couple of things here. So all, and we're going to use the shell command and we are going to cat, actually we'll just do grep dash I web test. We're doing that against that. See HTTPD, HTTPD dot, no conf and HTTPD dot conf. Okay, so all of that looks good. We expect that to be returned as such. And now what I want to do is LH dash LZ. And we're going to do that against web test. Okay, the SC Linux stuff looks good. So after a couple of videos in a row of like RHCE beatdown, it's felt like I'll finally have some some success with my uh, little review and impromptu assessment of SE Linux. There is another module that I want to talk about just briefly, and it should be SE Bool, I think is the name of the, 
module, but it's is the module for setting booleans for SE Linux. Nope, not SE bool. All right, so dash L grep SE Linux. Oh, SE boolean. Okay. And the thing I wanted to talk about with this is the fact that you would have whatever your name of the boolean, such as um, there's the one for allowing home directories to be used with HTTPD. The key here is that you want to set persistent to yes, because remember the SE boolean has kind of that firewall D thing of, you know, you're running config and then your um, startup config as far as you can set and an SE bool to work and it will work, but when you reboot, it doesn't. So make sure that you do persistent yes for that. So for this particular objective of, of managing security, I'm confident with being able to do standard file permissions and I'll take a look at the ACL stuff uh, between now and the exam because I know I haven't touched that module in, in a while. For the SC Linux piece of it, I think I would consider this a pass. Conceptually, I understand what's going on and I'm able to find the modules that I need. And then with my one example here of using an alternative area for HTTPD seemed like that it, that it worked. For the sake of time, I'm not gonna go back and break it just because I have broken this enough times to kind of be able to, to troubleshoot. And of course, if you are having SC Linux issues on your um, target servers, you can always um, install the SC troubleshoot dash server package and use SC alert to figure out what you need to do for SC Linux. So I want to thank you for taking the time to watch. If you found this useful or enjoyed it at all, make sure you do click a like and um, feel free to share it with others. Thanks again for returning subscribers. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do click that subscribe button and ring the bell so you can be notified of when new content comes available. And I'll see you the next time.